Question 8a. On the axis, sketch the graph of y equals to 4 minus 3x. Firstly, let's change this to y equals to mx plus c. Next, plot a table like this to find the coordinates of x and y. When x equals to 0, the value of y is 4. And when y equals to 0, the value of x is 4 over 3. So when x is 0, y is 4. And when y is 0, x is 4 over 3, somewhere around here. And just draw a straight line through both of these coordinates. Next, on the axis, sketch the graph of y equals to negative x square. When plotting graphs, you just need to know these general shapes. And the question here is to plot a graph of y equals to negative x squared. So this is what the graph is supposed to look like. Next, question C part 1. Find the coordinates of the turning points of the graph y equals to 10 plus 9x squared minus 2x cubed. You must show all your working. Turning point means that the dy dx is equal to 0. So your step 1 is to differentiate your y equation. When differentiating number is left with 0, this bringing it in front, it will be 2 times 9 plus 18x minus with 1. So that will be 1 minus, bring this to the front, 6x minus 1 squared. For the next step, we're going to make dy dx equal to 0. And now we're going to solve to find x. Factorizing 6x leaves me with 3 minus x equals to 0. And to solve x, I can make this 6x equals to 0 and 3 minus x equals to 0. And for the value of x would be x equals to 0 and x equals to 3. Now we're going to substitute the value of x into our equation y. The first y with substituting x equals to 0 gives us y equals to 10. And for the second y, when we substitute 3 into the equation, we will get 37. So the coordinates is 0, 10 and 3, 37. Next, part 2, determine whether each turning point is a maximum or a minimum. So previously, we have found two turning points. At turning point, the gradient of the curve will be 0. That's why previously we solved dy dx equals to 0. Now that we have found two turning points, we are looking to find the maximum point where the graph reaches its peak and the minimum point where the graph reaches the bottom. To do this, we're going to differentiate this equation one more time. And we're going to substitute x with the coordinate from each turning point, which is 0 and 3. And we will get 18 and negative 18 here. If the value here is a positive value, then the stationary point is a minimum point. And if the value is a negative value, then the stationary point is a maximum point. So this means that the coordinate 0, 10 is a minimum point and 337 is the maximum point. Question 9a. Jana and Kamal each invest $8,000. At the end of 12 years, they each have $12,800. Part 1. Jana invests in an account that pays simple interest at the rate of R% percent per year. Calculate the value of R. They have already mentioned here that this is a simple interest. So the first step we can do here is write down the formula. P is your initial amount of money, which is $8,000. R is the rate of percent per year. And the number of years here is 12. So this is 12. And the interest here is how much of money has been gained over the past 12 years. If they each invested $8,000 and at the end they have 12800 that means they have gained 4800 So the value for I here would be 4800 Now we just have to rearrange this to get a value of R which is 5%. Next, question part 2. Kamal invests in an account that pays compound interest at a rate of R% percent per year. Calculate the value of R, the formula for compound interest, this one. But this time the I here doesn't just stand for the amount that is gained, but instead is the amount that has been invested plus the interest. So the I here would be $12,800, the principal was $8,000, and the number of years was 12. Rearranging this, we will get a value of R at 3.99. Next, question B. The population of a city is growing exponentially at a rate of 1.8% per year. The population is now 260,000. Find the number of complete years from now when the population will first be more than 300,000. 
when calculating exponential growth, the formula is the same as compound interest. So we're looking to find the value of n here, when this will give us more than 300,000. Let's first substitute p and r. To answer this question, I'm actually just going to use trial and error. If I substitute n with 1, I will get 264,680, which is lesser than 300,000. So n cannot be 1. If I try n equals to 8, I get 299 and 885, which is still lesser than 300,000, so n cannot be 8. And if I increase n by 9, I will get 305,283, which is finally more than 300,000. So starting from year 9, the population will be more than 300,000. So n here will be 9. Question 10. The table shows some values for this equation. Part A is asking you to complete the table. So this is pretty simple. You're going to take the value of x and substitute it in your equation. And when x is negative 3, the value of y is negative 2.5. And now we're going to repeat for value of x equals to negative 0.5 and 1. Once you have completed the table, you can plot the points on the graph. Make sure you are using a pencil for this type of question. And then proceed to draw a smooth line to connect all the points. Make sure the lines are a smooth curve and you do not use a ruler to connect the dots. Question C. By drawing a suitable line on the graph, solve the equation 2x cubed plus 6x squared equals to 4.5. The existing equation that we have is like this. But currently this equation is with a different y-intercept. So we need to find what is the value of y so that we can draw a suitable line on the graph. To do this, we can minus this whole equation and find what is y. So negative 2.5 minus negative 4.5 is going to leave us with y equals to 2. And now you're going to draw a straight line at y equals to 2. And then find the points that it intercept on the graph. And those would be the values of your x. Next, question D. The equation equals to k has exactly two solutions. Write down the two possible values of k. So the first one is at y equals to 5.5. And for the second solution, it's at y equals to 2.5. Next, question 11. There is function of f, function of g, and function of h given. Question A, part 1, find g f2. So you have two functions combined here. This means that function of f to be substituted into function of g. So instead of x, now we're going to substitute this with function of f. And the function of f here has been substituted with 2 into the x. So the x here will be substituted with 2. So this here would be 1 over 2 instead of 1 over x. So solving this equation, we will get negative 3.5. Next part 2, the inverse of g. To find this inverse, make this equation equal to y. And now bring the inverse to the other side. So instead of gx, now we are going to use the function of g in terms of y. And now we're going to find y in terms of x. And since we said at the beginning that the inverse of g is equal to y, then y here is technically the inverse of g, which is x plus 5 over 3. Question B. Find in its simplest form gx minus 2. So the function of g is 3x minus 5. And instead of x, now we're going to use x minus 2. So we're going to substitute this into the x. And now we can open up the brackets. And simplifying this, we will get 3x minus 11. Next, part c. Find the value of x when fgx equals to 0 0.1. So we're going to substitute function of g into f. The function of f is 1 over x. So instead of x, we're going to put the function of gx into it. So this would be 1 over function of gx is 3x minus 5. So this equation here is fgx and it is equal to 0 0.1. Now we're going to rearrange to get what is the value of x. So I'm going to shift it like this first and then bring 5 to the other side and bring 3 to the other side and I will get x equal to 5. Next part 2. Function of h take away function of g equals to 0. So function of hx is 2 to the power of x minus function of g but instead of x we're going to substitute 7 into it. So this will give us 16. So minus 16 equals to 0. So based on the law of indices I can make the base the same 
16 can also be written as 2 to the power of 4. Now that my bases are the same, I'm left with x equal to 4. The final question 12a. The diagram shows a circle of radius 12 cm with a sector removed. Calculate the perimeter of the remaining shaded shape. So to calculate the perimeter, we are going to look for the outline of the shape. We know that this side is 12 and this side is also 12. So now we have to find out the length of this sector. The formula of a perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r. But since this is not a complete circle, we are going to multiply it with the shaded sector. After we have obtained the length of arc, we can add it with the both sides over here. So the perimeter of the entire shape is 88.9 centimeters. Next, question B. The diagram in part A shows that the top of a cylindrical cake with a slice removed. The volume of cake that remains is 3510 centimeter cube. Calculate the height of the cake. So what they're saying is the shape shown here is the top part of a cake. And after removing a slice, the volume of the remaining cake is 3510. And we're looking to find for the height of the cake. Since this is the shape of a cylinder, we will look for the volume of a cylinder, which is pi r square, the area of a circle, times by the height. But since a slice has been removed, we are going to find only the area of the sector. That would be 310 over 300 over 60 times by pi r square. And then multiply by h will give us this volume. We can substitute the value of r with the radius provided. And now let's simplify this. And rearranging this to find h, you will get... 9.01 centimeters as the height all right that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching for the next video i'll be discussing on chemistry paper 4 if you found this video helpful please subscribe like and comment to my channel thank you bye